When you see studies that say things like the stretched portion of a rep builds the most muscle or the negative portion of a rep builds the most muscle or this particular rep range has been shown to build the most muscle, you're not hearing the whole story. Here's the whole story. The other rep ranges, the other portions of the rep, all that other stuff, it also builds muscle. Don't avoid all the other stuff because you saw some silly studies saying that one thing was a little better than the other. In fact, all of the things that I mentioned have value, and if you understand that, you can apply them appropriately and get the most results. I'm doing this because of that. Have you seen the posts that are going around on oh, the, the half short reps? reps. The stretch? Yeah. yeah, half reps. Yep. I, yep. I saw that uh, somebody was posting that video of, uh, what's his name? Sam Solik or whatever, because he has a video of him doing partial reps. Yeah, and like you'll see bodybuilders do this sometimes and, and stuff like that. So, so I'll talk about the study. So they'll compare the ranges of a rep range. So let's say I'm doing a curl, right? There's the stretch portion where the, the bicep is fully lengthened then the mid range and then fully contracted. Mm -hmm. And they'll compare the effect of training in those different rep ranges and find which one builds uh, the most muscle. And what they find is the stretch portion um, builds the most muscle. And then they'll do studies where they say, okay, this group over here for 16 weeks only trains in the stretch portion. And then this group over here trains in, let's say, a full range of motion. And in that short 16-week period, they may show a little bit more muscle growth, growth in that stretch period. And so now you've got all these, you know, fitness people on social media advocating for these kind of ha half reps and partial reps, saying like this will maximize gains and stuff like that. And it annoys me because um, that's that's totally discounted the full understanding of what what the rep range does of training and of strength training. Like for example, this nobody talks about. The strength that you build within a particular rep, um, you know, uh, within a particular range of motion, most of the strength you gain is within the range of motion that you train. So what happens if you train in all these mm -hmm. half reps all the time? You're going to develop, even if you built the same amount of muscle, you're, you're not going to dysfunction. Dysfunction. 100%. And we've seen this, by the way. Yeah. We've shot videos for workout programs where we've had like bodybuilders come in or physique competitors come in demonstrating the exercises with lightweight. This is all demonstration. And they can't even lock out an overhead press because they're so dysfunctional that they have no strength. Put a dumbbell behind their head for tricep extension. Yeah. It's like, right. and that, that's where the the whole like bodybuilder meathead muscle bound. It's not only that, it's the, the the part that I think is is far more important that none of these talk about is that novelty trumps all of this. So if you took somebody who always trained in the shortened, uh, range of motion right, or in the stretch position and you all of a sudden put them for the, that same person, right? They've been like six months. Uh, they, all they did, they built all this muscle and then now it's starting to plateau because the body's adapted really well. And then you switch them over into full range of motion and, then you, results and then you compare to yeah. their, their training in, in six, the next six months in the stretch position. And you'll see that the, the novel stimulus is going to build more muscle. So the thing that I hate about all these studies that talk about uh, these type of specifics, uh, rep ranges, rest periods, stretch position, full range of all of it is that, you know, at one point you start to see diminishing returns. The body is this adaptation machine. So once you send the signal to get strong in this particular range of motion or this particular weight or this particular amount of repetitions or this particular amount of rest periods, then the body adapts. And then now the best thing to continue to build muscle is something different. Mm -hmm. And that thing different could be any of those things I just yeah, listed 16 off. 16 week studies on strength trainers. So it's just, it's just, terrible. It just seems like these camps, they always want these studies to come out to justify their favorite and their way, their methodology yeah. uh, exclusively. And so that way, like they can, uh, you know, come at the other methods out there and then create these turf wars. And it's just so stupid. All of it like produces like to your point earlier, like each one of those methods have a valid um, way of building muscle. And that's what we should be interested. Well, it in. feeds into the, the, the marketing cycle, right? Doug always talks about yep. this, right? Like there's, there's like a list of like the top, like five, titles for books and stuff like that like the the five secrets or whatever that yeah, it's yeah. like yeah. It, it it feeds into it's like this hidden secret like oh you've been doing full range of motion this whole time guess what no wonder partial, Shit look at this study that shows nerves. partial reps is better for this it's like it, it it's because of that because people scrolling or or you know searching things on youtube or whatever mm -hmm. and they come across something that 
is you know uh counterintuitive and it seems and then they have a study now that they can attach even to worse it. they try it, it's novel oh my god i'm convinced right well and that's what happened so because and, and this is what happened to me as a as a as a you know teenager in early 20s is i would read one of these studies or read one of these uh, articles that references this study in a, a muscle magazine, and now I would adopt it, and I would be married to it. It would be yeah. like, that's what I was doing for the next you year. onto the sunset. Yeah, yeah, because look at this guy's biceps. Until and, it became and, super clear that you plateaued. Yeah. I, I, I went through that cycle, I mean, so many times. I, re, I, I was convinced high-volume training was the way to train. Then I was convinced super low high volume intensity high intensity the then yeah. i was convinced partial reps was was the way to go then i was convinced that there were certain exercises then it was low reps then it was high reps then it yeah. was like short rest periods and it was long rest periods. so i did i did that same exact trajectory and then after i figured it out that oh that's not it, it's novel then i went all novelty every workout yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so i'm, I'm like too extreme everything yeah. different like every I, time I, I literally feel like i covered the entire spectrum it's yeah. like name your philosophy of, of training and i've adopted it and married it for too long and i think that's that's the lesson now that we're or where i think i've come to as far as like how i program for myself or for somebody else is that there you do want to stick in a, a modality, a, a range of motion, a, uh, a rest period, uh, uh, you know, reps for a, a short period of time so that you you send a novel stimulus to the body to, to force it to adapt and grow and build, but not too long that you start to see diminishing returns. And then it, and, and that time frame, based off all the studies, is going to land somewhere between three to six weeks for most people. And so whatever you you decide is you're going to be your, whether it's partial reps, full range, whether it be whatever rep range we're talking about, I want to stick to that and be consistent with it for three to six weeks so I can measure how well it's working for my body and see when it starts to slow down. And then I want to get out of that before week six and move into a new way of training so I continue to see those now results. Now, I will add, though, if you're – if you're within your first year of exercise, I don't think you should yeah, train you don't, you any partial to. reps. Yeah, you don't Not to. that you don't need to even, it's just that you're going to end up creating more dysfunction. Mm -hmm. If you haven't been working out consistently for a year and you strengthen a shortened range of motion, you will increase instability outside of that no, range that's of a motion. Good, that's a good yeah. point because this isn't, okay, when we, even though I threw it in the category of rest periods, reps, yeah. and things like it's it's not it doesn't even come close to comparing right. to those things. Like right. you can you can manipulate it's much more novel. You can you can manipulate uh exercise selection, rep range, rest period in your first yep. five years. Yep. Never mess never with touch that. Yeah. never touch short and range of motion, never touch failure training, never touch cluster setting, never touch all these these uh you know uh, obscure ways of right. stimulating the muscle and see tremendous and consistent results yep, yep so i i agree yeah and it's it's a, it's a dangerous way to train and, and can cause a lot of injury if you get really really strong in a particular portion of the range of motion little by little your body will try to keep you in that range of motion and keep you outside of the range of motion where there's a huge discrepancy because it, it it'll pick up on um, instability. And so your movement patterns will change. You'll get that muscle bound look or that dysfunctional type of look. And then this is where people who are really strong hurt themselves doing silly things like, mm -hmm. Oh, I could work out. I could lift so much weight in the gym. Well, how'd you hurt your shoulder? I threw a Frisbee at the park. Well, yeah. You know, or I turned around and grabbed something in the car and I threw it out my back. That's the real thing. You have that, um, that strength and in, in shorter ranges of motion, then you go to do something with acceleration that extends it, puts a, bu a bunch of force, uh, you know, into that, uh, those weak links in that range of motion, and it's boom, you're susceptible to injury. Yeah, that, that, that whole uh, philosophy, too. And you know, bodybuilding has a lot of benefits and value. There's a lot that you can learn from the way that bodybuilders train that apply to the average person. Uh, but it is an extreme endeavor and it is entirely focused on how the person looks. So there's a lot of also detriment to that. And one of them is the, the willingness to compromise, uh, not just physical health, but movement and stability and injury for the sake of just looking a particular way. And, um, I, you know, for most people, that's not a worthy trade. Okay. So you, you got 2% more muscular, and I'll make the argument that wouldn't even happen for the average person. Let's just say you did 2%, you know, you look 2% better, 
but now you're 15% less stable. Um, that's not a worthy trade. Uh, you know, no, you don't want to walk around with pain or, or whatever. And I've look, I've seen extreme cases where bodybuilders in the pursuit of a smaller waist will even wear a weight belt throughout every workout throughout the whole day, or even more extreme, will wear something like a squeam, like a squeam or, yeah. or a, um, what, like almost like a corset yeah. throughout the day, purposefully atrophying and weakening their core muscles to get a smaller waist. That's still a thing too, by the way. So <laughs> weird to me. Yeah. Just the back problems they're going to face later on. All right. Today's giveaway is maps aesthetic. If you want to win that program, do this, leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. We're also running a sale this month. Maps old time strength is half off and maps OCR is also half off. If you're interested, just do this. Click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. For I thought this was you know bodybuilding. You know what? Even if even if none of that stuff was true, which it is true, you still look stupid as fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can we just talk about that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah just keep it there. Like, dude. really? Like, like, you're wearing really? a corset, like, bro. Yeah. Deserve to get punched in the face for that. Yeah. Just, no, no, no. <laughs> so ridiculous when I saw that with all my peers. I'm like, man, you guys were they wearing them like, in the gym? They're, they're all the back time, all the time. Like, yeah, was it outside? Wanna, they were outside their you shirts. You guys want too? a plastic trophy that bad? That bad? You're gonna wear a woman's corset all day long to like shrink your waist? Like that's embarrassing. So silly. Hold on, would they wear it outside their shirt so they could show it and display it, or would it be under their? No, shirt? it would be under. Or, well, I mean, I think I've seen both actually. Uh, oh most, my god! Most, at least wear it under your shirt. Most guys, most guys would wear it under their shirt. I mean, it was, and most guys definitely would wear it while they were training, and then some would wear it even like throughout the day. So you, you saw both. Like I've seen it. I've seen it done every dumb way you, you can possibly do it. Um, and I've, I've heard every justification of why they're doing it, and it's like it doesn't matter to me. I, like I don't care. I don't care if it won you a show. You still look ridiculous. And it's, 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 it's a dumb idea. You know what I'm saying? So I just, it's crazy that Thank we- Thank God they got a discount from Kim Kardashian's website. She was know? selling them yeah. too. Such a, you know how many, I mean, can't imagine how many, how many kids try and do that and all in pursuit of this, this, you know, taking first place in men's physique or bodybuilding. It's like, do you see what the pay was for- for Chris Bumstead, like one of the most famous bodybuilders in the world right now. He didn't even cover his food probably. Yeah, 50 year. grand. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that didn't even cover hormones for the year. Wow. No way, not even close. No. So it's like huh. it, all all for that. Like, and, There's and, people on social media that don't even compete and that would make way more money because they use social media. Yeah. That whole thing. Ah, it's very, yeah. you know, and I'll be, look, and, and to be full disclosure, I've done a lot of stupid things in pursuit of changing how I look, um, all, you know, tied to body image stuff. And I've done a lot of stupid things. <laughs> But I've never purposely made myself weaker yeah. to look better. That didn't, never made sense to me. I didn't understand that. Like, I wouldn't purposefully make atrophy I mean, that's a part the of my body. I mean, that's yeah. the only that's case, That's the part right? that really no makes sense. no sense. That's the, only, that's the only thing that's like that, right? I, don't, I can't think of another situation where- If bodybuilders could make their bones and joints smaller to look better, they would. Oh, you know that? Remember oh that surgery god. that's getting popular now with the, the lengthening to make you taller? Oh my god, have you seen that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've heard about it. Like, so you know what parents they do? are doing that to their kids. Right? Do you know what they do? Yeah. Parents are doing that to kids. Yeah. They'll what? <sighs> yeah, there's like lengthening surgeries and all kinds of invasive stuff now <sighs> to have, make sure their kids are tall. I, I understand if there's like a dysfunction or medical issue. Um, but, oh yeah, well that's. But you know, if, I don't know. You're sending no. a weird. It's an interesting message you're sending your kid. It's like. <sighs> I don't know. They literally will saw the femur in half and they'll- Is it the femur or the tibia? I thought they were doing the tibia. Oh, sorry. The tibia. Yeah, yeah. Tibia. Uh, they separate it just slightly yeah, and they, support it with like screws. Okay. And so the separation causes bone to grow in between and then they do it again and again and again. So you constantly go in and they'll, they'll stretch it out and allow. And so, Yeah. It's wild. Yikes. What if we find out it makes their legs stronger, though, for doing that? I mean, that's kind of like- Well, the, when the bone heals, it should be stronger. I, and it's kind of interesting when you think of it like that. You might that. get weird proportions, though. Like you see someone and you're like, why is your shin so long? Yeah, why is your shin <laughs> lumpy? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's extreme. I mean, it would look really weird if you already had like long shins. Leg. If you had really long shins and you were short, it would already look odd. So and then to lengthen it even more. Some oh, athletes- yeah, that's some it's high level giveaway. athletes are built, uh, you know, genetically in a way that makes them better at their particular sport. What does that say right there? Surgical uh, osteomy, osteomy breaks on the femur. No, it is the femur and or tibia. Oh, or and or tibia. Yeah. And yeah. magnetic I've lengthening. Seen, I've seen rod. the tibia one. I've never seen the femur one. That's crazy. To me. God, that's a big bone to break wow. purposefully and do. 
Yeah, Ouch. that's going to be a painful process. Yeah, so 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 some athlete, high level athletes, uh, obviously work out hard, you know, train hard, do the whole thing, but they also are genetically built in a way that's advantageous for that sport. So you see this like. I don't remember what they call it. There's a term for it, but you'll see swimmers will look a particular way. Runners will look a particular way or whatever. High, high level distance runners, like the best of the best. If you ever see one in person, they look like crickets. <clears throat> they have these small upper bodies, like short and these long ass legs for hmm. their height. And you can see it. When they I mean, you by. see it, you see it in every sport. I mean, uh, and then like, swimmers are the Kawhi, opposite. Kawhi yeah. Leonard is an example of this. Um, his uh, length of his arms He's already like a, a tall guy. Like all basketball what? players oh, are, okay. are tall, for but for his his arm length is abnormally long, and his his finger length and hands are yeah. giant. That's yeah. what they call him, the claw. That's and crazy. it make he's if not the best defender in wow. the NBA. And it, I mean, if you imagine yeah, if you got an, advantage. an additional foot wider than everybody else, you close those passing lanes, and you have bigger hands. You can grab a hold of the ball and palm it easier. And so, and then he, of course, I mean, that doesn't take away from how disciplined he's been to become great. You add those. I mean, that's what we see. That's why I think sports are so fascinating to yeah. watch is because it's it's when the two of those merge, right? When you have this genetic anomaly meets the yeah. hardest worker in the room. Yeah. And then you get a superstar. Yeah. I mean, that's literally what it is. Like, yeah. there's no, and there's nothing that the average person could ever do. Yeah, they're using their genetic gifts to, and like yeah. training it yeah. instead of, yeah. You, like, my, like favorite, my favorite sport for that to watch is football because it's got the most genetically diverse uh, yeah, in my opinion, the athletes positions. on the yeah, field because of positions. Oh yeah, like like a lineman looks so different from a wide receiver. You know, for example, like they yeah. don't look like they're on the same playing the same sport. I just saw a picture of a, a lineman from Texas high school, like a high school player. He looked literally like he was in the NFL, like just manhandling another. And they're just like you know, every now and then you'll you'll get like somebody that young that just. They're, they're just like destined for it. Now, what I think is really interesting about that point about football is that not only do you have these very specific like body, types, yeah, yeah. body types and genetic anomalies and freak athletes, but even though they're so different, like a, comparing a lineman to a wide receiver quarterback, the, that that lineman is it's, still would be a better oh, wide receiver than I would be. Yeah. Oh yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like that's how like that's how gifted and yeah, talented. Yeah. They're still faster than that's anybody. Where, yeah. That's why I hung out my cleats, dude. That's dude. that's <laughs> the that's the part that is so crazy. Dude, I was at a a, a combine. And I watched this dude that was like I don't know. He was probably like six seven in like three hundred something pounds. <laughs> ran a forty in like four five four wow. six. And I was like, that's like getting hit by a car. I'm dude. done, dude. That's like, the high school movie you're talking about right there. Yes. Yeah, that's him. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Look at, look at how much. It's just stupid. That doesn't like, look right. He, he can eat him. The guy he's handling right now is six foot three, 200 pounds. What? Wow. And the offensive lineman that's doing, that's handling him is six, eight, 360 pounds. That's oh, a high school kid? Oh my God. 360 junior. pounds, six, eight. Dude, that's a big boy he's throwing right he now. He is destined for greatness. You know what's funny? What a double-edged sword. Either A- like what you said, Justin, could be destined for greatness, or B, it could make you so lazy in in, in sports and <laughs> athletics, right? Because yeah. like at that size, up until a certain yeah. point, he doesn't have to try it. Well, anything. I laugh because my roommate was like that. <laughs> <laughs> I always used to talk shit <clears throat> because you know I couldn't get him to go to the workouts with me, and like that was because he was half so my job. Yeah, I'm just like pulling him in, but he just because he didn't need to. He just shows up and he would literally just put one hand on somebody and they go to the ground. Yeah. Are you, it was so frustrating. Are you watching uh, Coach Prime on Amazon right now? Andrew, no. are you watching it? Uh-uh. Oh, man. You guys are missing out. Yeah. So good. Because they, they followed him. him. They followed him all from the uh, before at Colorado, right? When he was, I can't remember the name of the prep school that he was at before. It's slipping me. Mm -hmm. But that was season one. Season two now is Colorado. Okay. So I think yeah, because I watched the season one where he yeah, was, season they're on season two now where he's doing Colorado and you're watching him change that entire organization. It's really really great. It's great to I mean it's so you know what's interesting is because uh, I have a buddy who like hates him, and it's like Deion Sanders has created this. Uh, he there is nothing in the middle. You either are super in love with what he's doing and like right. and like mm -hmm. everything about what's going he's on. So outspoken, or you. Absolutely, like guaranteed. I bring this up on the show right now. Yeah. There's going to be Both comments. And yeah, love. yeah, lots of hate sure. and lots of love. Like he's like, there's no middle ground for this yeah. guy. It's like you, you either really, really appreciate and love everything he's doing, or you completely despise it. And you, you see like all the I, other kids. You, you see the, like my buddy who's a teacher, 
uh, his his reason for hating him and stuff like that is what he thinks is he's going to destroy this Colorado program and he's going to go basically go in there do his thing selfishly for him and then he'll be out and then when he's out it'll be decimated and you know, all these kids will be screwed and, and it's like this it's mm. like a, this selfish m movie he's playing that he's doing where a lot of other people believe it's the opposite he's going to go in there and he's going to shift the culture and even if he does leave you know they're going to have success in his wake mm -hmm. not the opposite so you it's know, interesting you know what's crazy about the co the the conversation we we're having that led to that was cuz i've experienced personally you have two justin or maybe you have two adam you've told some stories where you 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 know how good you are in comparison to other good people and then you go up against someone who's world class uh -huh. like i did that in in judo and jiu jitsu like i was i knew how i felt against the black belt and there were some that i could handle myself pretty well with and some that obviously could handle me because I never got to that level, but I knew how, I knew what it felt like until a world-class black belt came and trained with us. Yeah. And then I literally felt like I knew nothing. It yeah. was, it was such a gap. It was so, it was so wild to feel I mean, I feel how like easily he could, he could handle me that it blew my mind. Like there's a whole nother gear. In traditional sports, I feel like that happens at every level, right? Like if you're a general pop person who likes playing rec ball it's mm -hmm. like that's like we'll, yeah. we'll call that like the the lowest level of sport right where you can still be in your your early 20s and playing right but you're not in anything then you go to like college and then there's like junior college and regular college and then yeah, there's, there's d there's, then, the, then there's d1 yes. and then there's d1 at parts of the country if you're talking about football d1 d2 <laughs> yeah. there's naia and, there's like different levels and, 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 and it just keeps structure. going up yeah. until you le reach pro and if you make but then it, even within pro there's you're on the bench pro the average player sure pro, sure practice squad sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's the the levels are so, insane so here's where that takes me right because we know what plays the difference and there's definitely work ethic and all stuff but at that level it's like like gifts. Gifts play the big role, right? That discrepancy that we have identified with physical performance, which is wild. It's wild. There's such a huge variant. Most people are somewhere in the middle, but I then know the extreme. This it's in intelligence. intelligence. It's in, intelligence. It's in everything. And mm -hmm. How imagine yep. being so? You, you can imagine being like the best athlete in the world, and what that would feel like. I wonder what that feels like to be for dumb. people who are that smart. Oh, they should. Have who are on that <laughs> level of intelligence. Yeah, I think I think you I know what I mean. That's how about, feel. how about this? Let's trip on this for a minute, okay? What would you rather be, like Elon Jordan Peterson, intelligent, or would you rather be dumb as rocks? I think I'd almost rather be dumb as rocks. No, I think it would be. I, I'd be, it'd be you know, <laughs> You'd ignorance, be happier. <laughs> ignor, where do you think that saying comes from? Ignorance is bliss. Yeah, there, there is. There's a part of being ignorantly dumb would probably be my better ego, you're not even know where, yeah, than to be to be massively you. brilliant because it would probably be torturous. Yeah. And you and Having conversations with average people will be so unfulfilling. Yeah. Where if you're the if you're the dumb well, you guy, feel like you're wasting life. all of your knowledge, right? You're you're every day, every every second you're awake, you're like trying to like solve things. Well, imagine how frustrating it must be. I think so. Do you guys? So you guys disagree with that? You guys would not no, really I be the, I agree. My ego would not let me to answer that the way you, <laughs> you want me to. My ego says no. I will never because it's so just, you would rather be the the uh, yeah, ultra, ultra brilliant. Yeah, dumb yes, people yeah. are happy, dude. I'd rather be dumb, dude. Yeah, dumb yeah. and pretty. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> well, you didn't say <laughs> that part. Well, why not? I've seen you throwing more stuff in there. You know, dumb, pretty, rich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, I'm not going to say it's rich. Like no, the, the likelihood you're going to be rich is probably low if you're really yeah, dumb. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, I, I mean, dumb and pretty. Not if you're dumb be and a pretty. trophy husband, dude. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. Doug, where are you at with this? <laughs> That's a tough one for sure. Uh, being dumb maybe is ignorance is bliss. Yeah. I think there might be. I know a lot of dumb people. Would you be so dumb? I know a lot of happy dumb people. Hold on a second. I don't know a lot of very brilliant people that are happy yeah, that's right. true no that's, i think that's, that's very that. true i know i know way more dumb happy people well, did you know than that, i know that's a real brilliant people did that you know are. that's a real statistic yeah yeah that's a real statistic that high super high intelligence is associated with anxiety depression neuroticism yeah yeah Torturous. but really low intelligence is also associated with terrible mental disorders so i don't know how low you're going oh uh, yeah like are you talking about like average dumb or like dumb dumb <laughs> like, like, well, dumb, like dumb. not medically, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, not, like not a not a disability dumb. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. Just dumb. There was you know an episode just, of Family Guy like that where Peter didn't try. Peter yeah, goes to yeah. the doctor, He's does like, it? Nah. He does an IQ test, and the doctor's like, "Oh, well, you're borderline." You know, and, and, I mean, Andrew, where are you at with so this? Are you are everything. you uh, are you like really dumb, or are you super brilliant? If you had to choose either or, on a scale of happiness, I'd rather be dumb. Yeah. See, on a scale of 
impact, I'd rather be brilliant. Yeah, of course. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, it's, if don't, you're taking the best Some people aren't helping <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, in the world. But I mean, imagine how frustrating it is. Imagine, like, I wonder if, like, like a super brilliant, like, Stephen Hawking's or, or Elon Musk, if he always feels like he's in a room with kindergartners. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, you've been in this situation. We've talked about this off air for sure before. Like, how painful is it even when, at, at your level of intelligence, when you have to talk to somebody who's, so ignorant and dumb and they're and it's like wasting your time talking to them and it's painful yeah. it's painful and it's like that's the last time i'm going to associate with that person like they're still not I'm, getting it yeah. you know at that point too and you're so, like reducing it down yeah. and you're really good at communicating and simplifying and they still don't get it yeah like ah so for someone i feel like peterson or musk everybody has to feel like that to them yeah you have to feel like you are just Everybody you it's talk to, frustration just to even the people that think they get it, they don't get it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's how you feel. You're like, oh, yeah, that's he, gotta be so weird, you know? Yeah, yeah. fuck that. That's why you want to give me Mars. dumb? Give me yeah. a be a yeah. dumb dumb. Yeah, yeah. Happy. That's, that's why we gotta get the fuck out of here. He wants to go to Mars. Mars. <laughs> yeah, I'm tired exactly, of this. That's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> you see, they're all idiots. I'm, I'm out of here. Pressure. Yeah. Yeah. What's up with the what's so? What's up with the Cybertruck propaganda? You guys were bringing some stuff up. There was a video floating around. The one uh, I shared? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Which one? Yeah, the Christmas tree one. Oh, the, we're the, the stuck. Ford truck. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's a Ford truck out. that's pulling it out. Yeah. Dude, you, the, you know, the, the propaganda again. It is. It's, okay, so it's they're so I, wild. Look it's, at your look at your guys' text. I sent it to the group thread. Okay. So I, I comment on it. It's getting all kinds of traction and debate back and forth. So do you, tell me when you see it. The headline. You see the headline? Hold on. <laughs> Tesla abruptly Tesla stopped on the Bay Bridge, causing an eight vehicle crash. So you watch the video and the, the, the oh, yeah. Tesla car all of a sudden, like its blinker goes on and then yeah. it, it, just like it says, abruptly stops and then pop, 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 all these yeah. cars. Now, what I commented on that, I said, if this was any other car model, would the would this title lead with the car yeah. model? A Ford Explorer. No. 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 And just play that out. Like no one, you would no. never say that. You well, say that dri you would, Netflix You would movie. blame the driver. You would say driver does yeah. this or whatever. Even if it was like a, a Prius or another the like- propaganda is so wild I know, that, to me. Wasn't the latest movie on Netflix with- Yeah. The, the, it was about like Tesla cars It wasn't crashing. about that, but there's a whole but scene. But I mean, there was, they were in there. Yeah, dude. Like killing- It's but so you know, crazy. How many people don't see that? Like I, it's like so. There's debate going on with me on there. Like, oh, people are like, this is like. I'm like, think about it for a second. Yeah, it's just random. What, there, it's not no, like it's obvious. It's not like a car hasn't stopped abruptly on the freeway before, and cars haven't piled up. Yeah. To tell me the car model of any of those other scenarios. Yeah. It's you can't because yeah. they don't have they don't headline it like that. Yeah. They would say driver or they would they would reference or, or like self driving car crashes into another right car or something yeah. like that. It would, well, but not it, Tesla. Yeah, Tesla does this. Dude, and it's, it's like it's so wild, crazy it's to deliberate. Me. Yeah, it's very weird to me to see the organized efforts in certain directions uh, because once you see it, you can't unsee it, and it's like oh my god, this is wild. There's this one page I follow on Facebook called Futurism, <laughs> and I follow them because they post. Oh yeah articles about technology and stuff. But I swear to God, every other post is a, let's make a, let's find a way to say something negative. Dude, every- About Elon Musk. Yes, every it's tech so weird. company is like that. Every magazine, like Mashable, TechCrunch, I still follow all of them. And it, it, it literally is like, they'll drum up uh, information from years ago and just put it out there when something's hot, like with Tesla or whatever, just to like throw shade. Yeah. And it's so deliberate. There's, it's Okay, so you just bring me to- that that uh, clip that um, Kyle sent me this morning. I know you guys saw it with IBM. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This is it's wild. It's just weird, guys. It, this is so weird. I want everybody to understand how strange this is because, you know, in, in, in this country, when we moved towards the civil rights movement and we moved in those directions, it was about unifying. It yeah. was about character. It was about immutable- Lifting people up. Immutable characteristics are not important. What's important is your the character- individual. You know, the way you act, what you do, your beliefs. Um, it was led by by uh, spiritual leaders and churches. And it was very unifying, nonviolent. It wasn't yeah. about hate. It was just- Moving towards movie. color blindness. It's very strange how big of a, a twist and turn it's taken. And I mean, if you if you if people understand, I'm not going to go too far down this because I'll lose people. But if you look at the philosophy behind Marxism, Marxism really got twisted and turned into other things. And so it's, it's still in the same vein of that. And what they've done now is they've demonized, they've taken, uh, they've basically rebranded racism to make it seem like it's good. So here's, here's the example. So IBM, this was a leak, uh, that came out and it was a, this was to the employees and to the managers. They had to abide by their allyship commandments. Okay. And they would get punished 
or rewarded based off of these. And the way that they would judge these was like, how many people of this color did you hire? How many people of this gender did you hire? How many people of this in this position? Do you have the Ten Commandments that they wrote? I have the Ten Commandments. Yeah. This is coming from this a company. This was IBM. Down. Okay. It, now, it starts off and right out the gates are like, okay, but then it gets really bad. It says, uh, number one, openly acknowledges privilege and systemic racism exists and results in trauma. Number two, never questions the reality of our black friends and colleagues. Huh? What? Number three, yeah, never question. Okay, so someone, whatever. Number three, rejects the idea that race is political. Number four, accepts that white people are responsible for dismantling racism. Number five, understanding only white people are racist. That one really cracks oh, me up, which okay. is interesting. Number six, knows the black community owes us nothing in this work. Oh, I guess they're just talking to each other. Anyway, number seven, requires acknowledgement and repair of inevitable mistakes. Okay, that one's cool. Number eight, is never rooted in white saviorism. They made that up. Number nine, sees the black community as a group of individuals and not a monolith. I guess that's a good thing. Number 10, does not seek recognition or praise for a job well done, which is interesting. But replace white in here with any other race, this would get completely hammered. It's so strange that th like this is outright yeah. strange racism that a company would be promoting and telling their employees. It's really weird what's going on. Well, the leaked video I saw, and hopefully the guys can like, play it, is the CEO of IBM basically telling the other executives, like, you know, we need to get uh, Hispanics to this percentage. We need blacks to this percentage. I'm not trying to finesse this. So for blacks, we should try to get towards 13 point something percent. On Hispanics, you got to get into the mid-teens. So let me say it. Asians in the U.S. are not an underrepresented minority in a tech company. It's like, it's crazy that... I mean, you're a company that's for profit and your your initiatives are around race. That's mm -hmm. wild to weird. me. Weird. So Should weird. Be merit, Crazy. Period. End of story. Like if you perform, you perform. And yeah. That's just the bottom line. Imagine if sports, by the way, had these race quotas. <laughs> no. Hey, why not? Why wouldn't a pro football? Listen, along these lines, why shouldn't a pro team say we need an equal representation of every race and gender on this team? Yeah. You know why nobody would watch? Yeah. Because they just want to win. Yeah. The best player. Because the white guys suck. That's why. The best. <laughs> Let's just be honest. Let's just be honest. Because it doesn't work like that. Yeah, in those yes, sports. Yes. I mean, it's it's really strange. It's really weird. And by the way, um, uh, there's there are minorities that don't fall into this um, this uh, narrative. Uh, Asian Americans have been suffering quite a bit from college. Oh, he actually, that was like the most racist thing he said in that video was making that comment, saying that like they are not underrepresented in tech. Basically saying, like, fuck them. Well, was, I've heard them say, like, hey, oh, they're white. They're also considered Yeah, white. yeah, yeah. They would be considered privileged. It's, like, what? Oh, <laughs> it's, just, it's crazy that this is happening uh, in, like, in major corporations. come. And if you think if people- Such an opposite message of If you where think we that going. there isn't an agenda behind this, you're crazy. Because it sounds insane. Why would anybody promote this? There's an agenda. I, that, I think so that's, that's the, okay, that's the part I can't wrap my brain around is that, like, what yes, you're the agenda. CEO of this massive- what are they worth? Like $150 billion, some of that? IBM's up there, 150, yeah, 140 something? Yeah, no, they're up there. So you have this, this massive billion dollar company and you're the CEO of it. Like what? And as a CEO, uh, the, the board who decides if you're going to stay on or not uh, is is based normally off of, of profit and loss. Yeah, but you're also the amount of money you can borrow and who invests in you, whatever. A lot of that's controlled by these strange DEI initiatives and whatever. So there's a lot of things influencing. You're talking about ESG stuff? ESG, yes. Yeah, but are these guys taking on money still like that? It's, it's yeah, yeah, I believe so. I really? Believe they still have to deal with credit. I still, I think they still have to deal with banks. Um, there's a lot of influence that's happening. Consumers are one of them, right? Consumers can boycott companies and cause. I'm wondering, yeah, for like just in management, they take on some of this ideology that's Damn. just like they truly believe in this this movement of progression that it's like some ideologically superior way uh to to go forward which you know for us like growing up as we grew up we should look at people as are equal you know if you're going to be on a team with me we all have to see eye to eye and be equal now, and this is completely opposite now the reason the, the reason why i i don't get too caught up in a lot of this stuff is because i actually really believe that it's it'll play out it's like okay you're going to go this way like that. Like you create more races. You're, you're, a, a, you're a top of 100 company right now. Mm. Let's see where you're at in five years. I just think that the, 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 the market will reveal like that. This type of, of leadership, this way of running a company 
is not a successful way to do it. Even if temporarily they survive and they're okay. I mean, just like the, the, the Bud Light move, they had to pivot from that. Like, I think what the, what will happen is you will see, you'll start to see it break apart. I mean, yeah. when you've got that mm -hmm. much power and money, it'll take time. It won't happen. Like you won't take a, an IBM company and they'll be broke, you know, or go bankrupt next year. But you'll see the you'll see the stock decline. You'll start to see profits decline. You'll start to see infighting within well, the just staff. This you'll leaked see video, I guarantee, is gonna be damaging. To yeah, them. yeah, because it's there's, and, and you're seeing this sort of backlash already with just like the public in general. Uh, you know, it's like it's interesting that companies are still clasping onto that idea so hard, and, and this is like still like making its way around. Well, the right? only thing that makes sense is what Sal is saying, which I don't know enough of, like how much are the banks and and like a company like IBM that is already worth that much making that much money like how that, outside yeah. of the board yeah. who really has a lot of control right now that'd be the only way it makes sense right cuz otherwise it's like it's it's you're you're going to kill profits like it's like one of those things like i don't i don't understand like where the if you're if you're looking at it from uh, you know, an investor's perspective, like where's the benefit of going in this direction? It's just, it's very weird to me. It's very interesting and it's not even applied equally. Like you don't see, for example, you don't see them saying we need an equal female representation on oil rigs. Why don't we see that? Because nobody wants to fucking work on an oil rig. That's <laughs> yeah, why. Yeah. Because the only people that do it are like, oh my God, this is hardcore and crazy and whatever. So it's, it's obviously bullshit. That's the bottom line. It's obviously bullshit. You should get hired. And I know everybody's say, well, that's not how the real world works. Yes, there's definitely discrimination. There's assholes and shit out there. Yeah. But you should, the ideal is that you, it, it's based off your merit. Do you perform the job well? Answer, yes or no. Who does the job best? Who's going to give us the best return? Who's going to show up on time? Who's going to work hard? Who's going to whatever, stay with us? Not... Like, okay, here's my criteria. I got to throw away these applicants because they're the wrong color. Yeah. I have to only pick from these applicants because they fit this criteria of the right, you know, gender, It's the color. same shit they're fighting against forever. It's just now it's like, it, you know, it, again, this is where it's like fighting tyranny with be, while becoming a tyrant. Yeah. It's dude. just, it I just mean, I, I just think the same what pattern. we're seeing is uh, the, the results of the, what the school systems have been preaching for the last couple decades now and that's starting to shift you guys see the uh elon musk just went through 100 million at, at education no oh yeah he's trying to start education a, where start where? a school oh wow oh. yes yeah, yeah, Jordan, in yeah, austin yeah, Jordan, um, yes in, area? In, in, in texas that's because the that dude the the market uh is speaking oh, there's, Listen, there's we, big demand I, for if you go far enough back on, on the show you we call that education would be get massively disrupted yes. and then within the next 10 years. And that was like five, four or five years ago when yep. we called that. Yep. And so it's here. I mean, if you, you have we're 20, we need options. In I mean, my opinion, parents. we're 15 years away from it looking totally different. I think it'll completely change. Yeah. Public schools are losing money it's, left and right because parents are pulling their kids out and either going public, uh, either going private or homeschool. Yeah. And all these options are opening up because parents are, especially after COVID, COVID was oh. like adding fuel to the to the fire. It just showed like just all the cracks. Like it was very visible. All like the where cracks. Where we're failing. And also, look, I by the way, I'm speaking from someone who's like, uh, gosh, I don't know. A good chunk of the of of some of the people in my family work as teachers. My mom's a teacher. She works in public schools. Yeah, my brother's a teacher. And during COVID, you had a lot of public schools on strike to stay closed. In private schools, you had them going on strikes to open. Why? Public schools got money no matter what. Public schools got no money yeah. if the kids didn't attend. And so the incentives were all weird and twisted. And yeah. they kept, by the way, the damage of keeping kids out of school during that period of time, or like you can't argue that. Yeah. It was terrible. Yeah, I mean, what was rough for me to see was when we were at the school the other day and seeing, you know, kids that are still, you know, they had the option now and they're choosing to, to wear them. A mask? Yeah. Oh, God. It just it, it pains me when you I, know see, what the I damn see a kid doing that, like... <sighs> It just it's yeah. so hard for me it's to not get angry. The fear, yeah. It's, how much you know how much of how much we dictate enforced. reading someone's emotions and communication and things that are even subconscious based off someone's face and facial expressions, and covering someone's face constantly has a profound effect on your psychology as an adult. Mm -hmm. You do that to a child whose brain is developing, you are going to cause some irreparable damage because the brain stops being so plastic at a certain point. So you put your little kid 
in a very ineffective mask. The data on that is also very clear, especially if you don't handle it like a medical professional, which you're, I'm sorry, your third grader is not doing that. No. All you're doing is damaging them. That's how, all you're doing. How blown out of proportion do you think that is? And do you think that people that are still pro, your kids wearing a mask, think that is blown out of proportion? Because obviously, I don't, those people are not unaware. There's no way after everything that's came out, where we're at currently right now, that they have not heard that argument. Parents do a lot of stupid shit. That's just one of them. I mean, and I'm, you know. Well, the, uh, I mean, they would really have to go outside of their channels of uh, reinforced. Like, if you're just still on legacy media and you're just constantly watching the same shows, reading the same newspapers, whatever it is, like, it's it's going to reinforce those ideas still. Like they're not getting challenged. Let's just say, so, you know, speaking of legacy media and, and outlets like that, like the New York times and some of these, like, did you guys see after that last debate where Vivek just destroyed yeah. the everybody? CNN? Yeah. Oh, oh, the debate. Yeah. Yeah. yeah after oh, that, the reporting on it was weird. Did, did you see the reporting on it? Weird. I mean, it is not even like, you can be a, not a fan of Vivek. Like you, a, 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 just a normal person, prick someone no, in your family. Made it, they made yeah. up, they, they made up Bro, everything they reported. They made up. They, they put, Christy and uh, what's her face as Haiti, winners? Haiti. Yeah, Nikki Haley as winners of that debate. Yeah, right. And Vivek as the loser. The like oh, worst. hilarious. The, he they almost every one of those uh, those those outlets put him at <sighs> and I okay I'm not a big political guy. I don't watch a lot of these, no, but I, I've seen I watch enough those debates to have said that was one of the the craziest like dismantling of your oh, opponents I have ever seen. He eviscerated them. Just. Crazy. Not because we agree with him, by the no, way. No, yeah. Any anybody can watch yeah, it. Go yeah, yeah. out. It's yeah. a debate, out. just for a debate perspective. Like yeah. he right, right. literally That's just brought I mean, like, all uh, guns. If you watched that, okay, you actually watched it. Uh, uh, please uh, explain to me how you Here, could possibly not say. Here's what's happening. He destroyed them, and they yes. put him as the loser. Here's what's <laughs> happening. Not even in the middle for, or tied for listen. first. That's why it's like who even listen. believes what? these fucking. Listen, if you if you people. film a fight. And then you take that whole video, you can edit it to make it look like something else happened. You could film Mike Tyson fighting whoever, and in that fight, you can edit it so that every jab and the other guy. So here's really the, here's and the, then you can put that out. So here's and that's the, what they do. So here's the argument True. And to, 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 to piggyback off what you're saying. Because everyone like, well, how's this possible? And oh, how, they're, how are they impacting it? Listen, uh, there's over 2 million. Two, 2 million or 20 million. There's like, look up how many subscribers of the New York Times there is. It's it's above 2 million. It's it's okay. a lot more, right? Uh, these millions of people are subscribing to that. And there's probably millions of people. That debate was one of the lowest watched debates ever. Yeah, they, they didn't, didn't even watch it. watch it. And they, they they will take that analysis as truth, especially if they cherry pick certain parts to mm -hmm. fit the narrative that they're doing. And then you don't ever... Do your own homework and you just assume that, so, oh, this Vivek guy is in last place all the time. 10 million subscribers. 10 million? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so there's 10 so million me, people so that could easily fall for that. We've talked about this before, and I want to bring this up again. So do you think it's always been this way, or do you think it's just more obvious now? Because I'm going to tell you, like, uh, you know, this is something I've yeah. been paying attention to this kind of stuff for a while just because I, I like this kind of stuff. And for me, I've seen this, like, this is strange. How can they, like, wow, there's definitely special interests that are controlling information that it's opposite of what we would ever. You and I had this debate but then a while after, back. I know. After COVID, you and I had this seems, debate a while back. It I, seems like we're just, you think it's worse. Yes, it's definitely yeah. worse. I think, yeah, I think it's been around, but it's, it's, we can see it more now, which the perception of it makes it even worse. It's like harder for been, them to control. And, maybe. Well, and two, they're not even trying to hide lies. Like they're not trying to cover things up. They're not trying to like, it's just like, Whatever we say, a certain segment's going to believe us, and so we're just going to keep feeding them. Like there just doesn't seem to be any regard for like, um, you know, how it's going to make them look later on or whatever. Like it, it, it just seems like we're just going to be out with our narrative. I, I mean, I never once will you hear me deny that this hasn't been happening forever. Yeah, this has been happening forever, yeah. but it is far worse today than it's ever been. And I think just that's because of how fast news travels. I mean, you used yeah. to have to wait till 10 o'clock, 5 o'clock, you know, certain. You could bury old stories pretty quick by yeah. the cycle. But now, I mean. There are attempts. Are, there's more attempts. There's more. Way attempts. more. Wait. Like, it's not even It's not even close. I mean, It's because, so weird, dude. Because there's so many. When you, if you count things like Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, if you include them as media outlets now, uh -huh. there's just so many more. Listen, I'm going to give you guys an example right now. <laughs> That's I'm gonna why give aliens are in the conversation. <laughs> 
<laughs> what? And, and every and distraction you and can. Not, and, and that's not weird to us. That's weird. That's crazy. Bro, we mind. had literally a, a a balloon, you know, flying across the country. Yeah, every to that? like everybody's freaking out. It's it's like whatever. Like in, if we're just in a room, we're like we got to figure something well, out to distract everybody. Listen, I'm going to give you an example that's fitness related because this is happening everywhere. This is also happening in health. I've, I see articles and things that people are saying that are not just not the truth they're the opposite of what's true yeah and it's weird to me it's so weird to me i almost feel like am i living like is this am i awake like am i asleep is a weird dream this is crazy so here's the title of this article and it was flying all over the place eat less move more doesn't actually work for weight loss according to a new study <laughs> so according to a new study eating less and moving more doesn't work like don't do it but then when you read the study and you read through it here's what they're this is what happened Doctors who tell their clients and don't coach them, don't work with them, don't train them. Doctors like, yeah, yeah, your BMI is high. You need to eat less, move more. That doesn't work. <laughs> well, no shit. Yeah. No shit. But the act, they says new study shows. So what does it imply? So the, it implies that there's nothing you can do about your weight. The, re the reason, the reason why Man. this, the reason it's why crazy. it's like that in all, it's because the algorithm feeds this, right? Yeah. The more, uh, outlandish. People only read titles too. It, it's it's just going that direction. Which it, this also feeds the point that I feel like um, Jordan Peterson made about Twitter on our show. You know, like it's this is why the, the, it it's not a true reflection of society. It's not a true reflection. No. What if it of, is? What if it's a reflection? What if it's simply amplifying the absolute worst of us and all this complaining? Well, that that is what all it's this craziness doing. that we're seeing. That is what it's, it's doing. It's just our own fault. How it many is. people has it converted? <sighs> You know, yeah. that, that was my concern is like how many people have like, well, the flat like earthers teetering is just an and then example just of that took them over I the, mean, the edge. The flat earthers have been around for, for a long time and, but boy, are they popular today? You they know got hella yeah. videos and shit now. Yeah. I never heard it. Did you ever hear of a flat earther when you were a kid? No, no of course no. not. Why would, Nobody yeah. ever talked about no. that. Now it's like super popular. We, we have more science, more information, <laughs> more proof. And it's the other way. Do you guys know? Right. I, guess, to highlight I had that a point. debate yeah, with totally. my uncle as a, when I was a kid, I must've been. I was 20 and him and I sat down. It was at a family party. And this is like, this is pure, pure, perfect example of smart, but not wise. So I was a smart kid, but I was definitely not wise. I was, you know, I was a kid and I'm talking with my uncle and we were talking about the internet. Now keep in mind, I'm 19. So this is, what is it? You know, 1999 or so, uh, 1998. So the internet was kind of, you know, growing. And I remember telling him like, you don't understand uncle. I said, this is going to save the world. I said, when everybody has easy access to all the information in the world, we'll have no more problems because we're going to know things. Like the problem, the pro all of our issues today is because we're just not informed. And my uncle looked at me, he's like, no, you can give everybody all the information in the world, but that's not wisdom. And him and I had this long ass argument about it. Well, he was obviously right. He was <laughs> obviously right. And I was like set, like no way. When everybody knows everything, we're going to be so much better. No. The one I'm most afraid of that's that's happening because I, I I don't think I get too fearful of stuff like that. But the the movement around the meat is like <laughs> it's scary to think what where we might be in five to ten. Crazy years. Like, guys, because they'll start passing that. laws. Yeah, so they'll start that, passing laws and banning. Yeah, so that's going to be really interesting. United yeah. Nations actually didn't they just put something out and say that they are trying to get countries to to set limits or standards to reduce meat consumption. Yeah. Here's something around 2030 or something yeah. here. Where they were trying my, to my thought on this. Okay. This is my strategy. So I just ordered another one of those massive freezers and I'm not going to eat my butcher box. I'm just going to freeze it. Deep and freeze I'm, it. I'm going to deep freeze it. How long does the meat stay? If you, mm. if oh, you vacuum long, seal it and deep freeze it a long Look time. Up. Do you vacuum and seal it? Start raising cows. I don't, dude, but I'm don't going to, if we're going to, cause I think, I think in like, we used to do this with marijuana, right? So used to, used to, <laughs> used to vacuum seal. So like in the, you get like in, so in, in the seasons, right? So when outdoor season hits in marijuana, the, the prices mm -hmm. manipulate like crazy because there's a flood of cannabis out there because of outdoor, right? Cause so the much irony more. now you marijuana, so, you find it on the corner. So what, what <laughs> yeah. would, so what would happen is it would, you're going to be a, you're going to be a meat dealer. So it would, it would drive the <laughs> yeah. prices down. Now, once you get through winter and everybody's smoked all that outdoor, and now you only have indoor weed, which is a fraction of how much you have during the outdoor season, price is almost double. Mm -hmm. So smart strategies for a lot of guys would be to vacuum seal the outdoor Put so it you away. Could, you could, you be could disciplined to not sell it, which most 
guys couldn't do because they were on the hustle. They uh, lived they lived paycheck to paycheck or drug deal to drug deal. Yeah. They would sell all their stuff because they had it. But if you were smart, you would hold it hey. for six or seven months. That's what it's going to happen with meat. Hey, what if this meat's going to get like that? And I'm going to sell what if meat. The, I was just going to say, what yeah. if this is all serendipitous? What if the skills that you learn <laughs> selling yeah. weed during See, that great kind of great period? What if in, in 2030, it's gonna be you're going to be a hamburger dealer? Why do you think I'm already, I'm ahead of the curve right now. I'm, gonna, I'm stocking up my butcher <laughs> box. I'm putting it away. I'm freezing it. How much time do I got? So two to three years. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Two to yeah. three years. If you vacuum seal it. If you it, vacuum seal it and, and freeze, freeze it. it. Yeah. yeah. yeah so bro. I vacuum seal it. Do you vacuum, vacuum seal no, it? No, no, because I eat mine, but I'm going to stop. I'm going to start, I'm going to keep it because I'm going to sell it. Yeah. It's going to be worth way more money yeah. in like two years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> way more money. <laughs> It's going to keep this business afloat for sure. You know what I'm saying? If they try and cancel us, that's all right. We'll be we'll sell your friend, steak. Your friend's yeah. buying Bitcoin and gold. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> how, how, are you, hey, how are you going to survive? We just have meat bunkers. Yeah. How are you going like, to survive the economic apocalypse? You open your freezer. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Plus, but, I can eat it if I need food. So that's, I'm, I'm think good. about that. Yeah. Huh? Just, have you, by the way. Hope you have a generator, though. Huh? Hope you have a generator. I haven't thought that Justin does. I got it. Yeah, yeah, I got yeah, you. Yeah. Keep that freezer generator? going once they, yeah. uh, the outage happens. Hold on. Do you have a house generator? Yeah, bro. What's it run on? Gas? Yeah. Okay. What else would it run on? Yeah. Solar. Oh. Doesn't, doesn't, uh, I think Tesla has yeah. solar panels yeah. for the yeah, house. Yeah, but that's, I mean, again, like with solar, you're, you're dependent. It doesn't really get like with the cover of, of, yeah. uh, clouds and everything. You don't really, it's inconsistent. Let's yeah. put it that way. No, I'm just saying in case, uh, you know, there's no gas either. Yeah. Well, you know what I mean? We'll just, we'll get a bunch of them. Do yeah. they make like a solar and gas one? So you could run on solar when you have it and then gas when you, when you don't? That'd be I'm interesting. Not familiar with we that. We should buy a piece of land for us, right? Oh, great. Here we go. Oh, did you guys see, uh, what's his face? Did the Who? $100 million bunker he just built? I know. Yeah. That's Zuckerberg. Sh- Zuckerberg. That Why would he do that? That scares the shit out of me. I know. <laughs> hmm. So what does what, he know? So there's a mansion that connects to another mansion and then it's like an underground yeah. bunker. Yeah. Like a $100 million compound underground. Yeah. For him to survive what we're all going to It almost feels like he messed up, though. Like, how did, why would, you know, wouldn't you want to keep that a secret? Like, don't I, be telling everybody you got this I don't know how you could with all the work. Yeah, you know, no they don't know it's a bunker. You, can yeah, you can't something keep up. that a secret. There's too many people involved without to keep There's that too a secret. Too many, yeah, nosy people. Yeah. Especially so, when you're doing By the island. way, speaking of butcher box, you know, my cousin, I haven't tried this yet, but when I use, so I get, the, I like getting the tri tips from butcher box. Love their tri tips. We sear it first in a cast iron then we put it in the oven yeah they do a reverse sear yeah what's it so have you I, tried I, yeah i always reverse sear. that's how i don't, I that, don't it's better i don't sear first i sear at the end and they he said it's better that way i mean so I, what do you do you put it in the oven first well i use my slow cooker i okay. i smoke it so okay. i smoke it first and then, and then i do a sear at the so end. the juice doesn't come out when you don't sear it? no when you slow cook you don't have to worry about that oh. if you put it on a, a hot flame really quickly then the, you lose some of that oh. but when you slow cook it just barely brings the temperature up really really slow oh. and cooks it more evenly better and it makes the meat super now what if tender. i don't have a smoker and i just do it in the oven yeah the same difference really yeah yeah that's your what you're doing in the oven so i would run the oven if you're going to cook some of those steaks i would run your oven at like two so it's a tri-tip 225 so yeah. you put it in your room temperature throw it in there for two, a while. put it at 225 and then you know just take check, check the, the the when it's done then i sear it almost done because you're gonna it's gonna raise the meat by another five to eight degrees depending on how long you sear so if you sear for a minute a minute it, it'll normally jump your your internal temperature mm-hmm. by about five degrees would you say about that I'd think so, yeah. Yeah, about mm-hmm. five degrees. Mm-hmm. So I, so when I pull, I don't like my meat rare. I like it like medium rare to medium. Yeah. I pull at rare, and then, and then I sear. Medium. Yeah. What's uh? What do you guys put on? Because you guys use like rubs and stuff, right? Or what's your mm-hmm. go-to for steaks? Mm-hmm. Usually just salt. Not steaks, but like tri-tip. Don't you guys do? I, I like Montre- I like much. Montreal seasoning. It's like a real standard. Ba- yeah, pretty basic like seasoning. Or I'll just do salt and pepper. So we go olive oil, uh, garlic powder. Um, olive oil, garlic powder. Uh, oh, really coarse sea salt, actually, mm-hmm. first. Then mm-hmm. the garlic powder. So it's got a nice crust. Yeah. And then uh, ground up rosemary. That's it's good. so good. I mean, that's what, like, a, like a Montreal. I have to look at what Montreal Yeah, I don't know what is. the Santa Maria, like, spice, but we used to have, like, a spices of the Santa mm-hmm. Maria tri tip that you'd put on there. And that, we'd rub that in there. It was really good. But mm-hmm. I don't know what that consists of. So I mean, really, like, to Doug's point, really good meat. You don't need mutton, but salt and pepper, mm-hmm. man. And most you're like, yeah. Yeah. like, hardcore, yep. 
barbecue grill guys will just be like, no, you got a yeah. good cut of meat, like yep. just good salt yep. and pepper. Absolutely. And you don't need, you don't, you don't need much Hey, else. so update uh, on the vasectomy stuff. So I, I told you I had to schedule it, right? <laughs> Whoa. So it's a dumb, <laughs> From meat to meat. You did? <laughs> yeah, I, had to, I did schedule it. I Snizzle snip. You. No, I got an appointment. I'll believe it when I see it. You're right. You're yeah, right. I still yeah. haven't done it. But so. <laughs> Are you going to show him when you're done? Huh? Yeah, I'm going to want to see. Okay. Yeah, 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 how well, would you see? The incision or what? I don't know. Maybe it changes. I heard it shrinks you a little bit. Wow. Really? Yeah. Good. That's yeah, good. Yeah, I need yeah, that. Yeah. Right. So, <laughs> thanks for the. <laughs> sorry, Doug. Adam started it. Listen, that was a joke, everybody. Uh, I yeah, I'm gonna go yeah, and it. and Jessica has really encouraged me. You want to know how she encouraged me? <laughs> How's that? We she won't not have sex with you anymore. No, that not would unless we wear a condom, dude. I'm married. I gotta wear a condom now. What the uh, hell's going on here? That never bothered no me. No way. I, yeah, yeah. Come on, man. No. Yeah, yeah. That's dumb. Yeah. That's so dumb. <laughs> Don't say that. There's a lot of kids right now that keeps keeps those kids. Well, I'm yeah, married, dude. everybody. Yeah, if you're not married, tool. you're stupid. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't have unprotected sex if you're not married. So when's the date? When are you scheduled? I don't want to say it. I'm going to say it on the air. So maybe why? Because. Why would, why? why would my, that my, matter? <clears throat> might have, have some fan show up. Yeah. Show up. <laughs> hey, I just started to get hey, mine today, too. Yeah, I'm here to document. Place. I mean, is Don't there a lot it. of places you can get it? I mean, you can get it Don't all over the place. It. I just wanted it's, so I could... It's a consultation. Let me have some. Oh, you're only... <laughs> first, to you do a consultation. Oh, uh, yeah, I definitely... And then they schedule the yeah, yeah. procedure. For the audience, just so you guys know, when we first met in the very first studio, which is two studios ago, Sal, that was the first thing Sal told us he was going to do. Yeah. So he told us that yeah. when we first started. So, yeah. So, so yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I'll believe it when I see but it. But yeah, no, this time I think this time this time I'm serious. I'm gonna go do well, that. Well, unvaccinated <laughs> gold, you gotta consider that. That's you know? what the, you know yeah. they're saying that? I know. Did I you guys it. know they're, they're, that unvaccinated um sperm yep. is going for more. Is yep. it true? Is that true? Or is that it, like is that just more clickbait stuff? I have inside Doug, information. Google unvaccinated it is a thing. You have inside information? <laughs> yes. You got somebody at a sperm bank? I got somebody that's shopping around, let's just say like a friend. You got a friend shopping around for sperm? Yeah. I don't I don't have that. Really? Well, it's a girl. Don't worry. Yeah. Okay. But, <laughs> what? But, I'm not that I that matters, that. but yeah. <laughs> I just assume that, Justin. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying. <laughs> Wait a minute. What are you going to do? I'm going to say That's why. <laughs> I did assume. I don't know. It, I did it, assume it was able to belt I don't know. It's, Anyways. Yeah. Uh, do they discriminate like that? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know much so, about that. So now but. she's, is she asking for it herself? Yo, yo, or like, is she being told that, hey, if you want she this. She asked moment. about it because it was like, um there was you know you get like a profile and i think that what they do is they give like pictures of the person the guy that donated like when they're like younger like when they're a kid because they don't want to reveal like what the person oh. so it's like you see kind of like the characteristics that oh, interesting. way but you don't see them as an adult which i think is interesting um but yeah like what if you're an ugly duckling that's not cool you know what i mean I'm i don't sweet. want this one kind of if you turned out to be i guess it's handsome. a risk right you know what, I mean? what does it say you know, there's nothing to verify that. Yes, yeah, see, I thought uh, it was clickbait. However, it seems there is a, a problem with supply right now. Mm. Yeah, sperm banks are running low. Well, they're probably not going to report it, but people go in there and they ask that specifically. Yeah. I mean, I if I was a chick, thing. I, would. I would. So no. it's like, it's you know, the articles are going to pick it up or not. It's happening. Wow. So hard to believe anything. Wow. You know I had saying? a friend who went and got, uh, she got inseminated or whatever because she wanted to have a kid. And she wanted, why she wanted like, uh, like tall, dark, and handsome, right? That was the thing. Like the, the tan skin. Now, and you pick all this stuff out. They go and they actually say like, what do you want? Burnett? You want whatever? Yeah, yeah. So she wanted tall, dark, and handsome. She had like this super redhead, white kid. No, she did <laughs> yeah, it. Dude. No, she did it. Really? <laughs> really? Oh, that's great. Yeah, she did. Oh, that's right. God, Wonderful kid. God has a sense Wonderful of humor. Wonderful kid. Yeah, no. That's funny. I know. That's too I funny. Know. Hey, uh, shout out. Okay. Yeah, uh, this is timely. Or this makes sense here. Yeah. <laughs> no, is that, do you know what it is? Do you <laughs> yeah, know I do. It? Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Chris Nagibi, my buddy, is friends with the the guys or the group or the people that run Baller Busters. It's an Instagram. <laughs> it's an Instagram page. It has nothing to do sexually. <laughs> it has everything. Time. That's what I'm getting my The That's title wow. has to do with you know ballers on the internet, right? You know these these big name people that are teaching you how to make money, which is all over the internet. And it, like he his mission is or his mission is to like debunk a lot of these these charlatans, right? Oh wow. Yeah, and so and. He brings like real good, like when they're ones getting sued by the SEC, like he gets the, the legal documents and, and shares like this, this grifter right here is, yeah. you know, he rented that Ferrari. Right? Yeah. 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 Wow. So he, he's, uh, they, they bust awesome. a lot of these people that are on the internet making money, selling courses to get rich. 
And so uh, he's he's great. Or she, I don't even know. Actually, the person is anonymous who runs the page. And of so, course. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're smart. Oh, they, yeah. 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 They don't. That makes sense. Yeah. And, and Chris, I asked Chris and Chris, I supposedly Chris is like connected somehow to him, but doesn't even know who it actually is. Wow. Oh, really? Actually, That's how that's working? Yeah. Oh. So they, they've, they've kept themselves anonymous, which huh. of like to your point, fucking with people that got money, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like yeah, that, like true. not, not dangerous. Not, yeah. Yeah. So smart that he stayed anonymous, but the page is great. It's hilarious, and uh, and they, they definitely expose a lot of people. Real quick, before we we sign off here, uh, how many people do we have signed up for the train the trainer course now? Over 6,000, I think. 6,000. It's growing. you got to get on there if you're a trainer or coach. It's going to be fire. It's Mind Pump. Was it mindpumptrainer.com? And it's a three-day course. We're going to teach you free. some cool stuff on how to build your business, be a more effective trainer and coach. Awesome stuff. Your body's ability to deal with stress is what dictates how much muscle you can build, how well you recover, and how good you feel. Well, there are adaptogenic herbs that have been shown in studies that will improve your body's ability to deal with stress. There's a company called Stress Guardian, and they make a supplement that has the 14 best adaptogenic herbs in one supplement to help your body deal with stress better. Go check them out. Go to stressguardian.com forward slash mind pump and get yourself set up. All right, back to the show. First question is from Aisala Hian. I'd like to be able to do a muscle up. What should I do to get to that point? Why? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's just be honest, dude. It's, it's hard. Cool. It's a hard, uh, it's, a, it's a goal. I mean, you know, fine. Some people okay, have. we can talk yeah. about this and answer this. I yeah. just think it's Listen, interesting. You, okay, so. Uh, I'm just sour because I can't do anything. I know. Yeah, general, yeah. general I, bet, I mean, you bet you could at one point. Yeah, I don't know. I've never really tried. You've never it. done it? No. Uh, yeah. yeah, no, I never uh, so tried. Never cared to. Here's here's the um, here's some good general advice for being able to train yourself to get to do a particular type of movement that is challenging. It's not a guarantee, but it is the roadmap. It is the it is the path, and that is to break yeah. the movement the down segments. into small segments. Train the segments you currently have the strength to do, and slowly progress yourself to be able to do the more difficult segments. So what, what this look like with a muscle up, let's just say you could do a normal pull up and let's say you could do a normal dip from a very deep position. So you could do two parts of the lift, but the switch off, right? The, the coming up and turning into the pull up into the dip is the hard part. Well, the way you would break that down is I would do a fast pull up where I jump up off the bar, right? I might perform that explosive part. Then I would progress that to coming up to be able to hold myself up for a second. And then I'll progress that to a better position that I progress that to getting into it and pushing myself up type of deal. The more you can break a mm -hmm. movement down and train its segments, the easier or, or, or better the, or more clear the path is to be able to train the more complex, challenging movement. Yeah. Uh, in, in terms of like a strict muscle up. And if I'm doing that without like the technique of, kind of gaining that momentum and depending whether you're not doing it on rings or on the, uh, the bar, uh, if you, to your point of like segmenting it, like taking that first initial pull up and getting as high as I can to where my chest is over the bar. Yeah. And if I can get up to the point and just keep working on higher and higher and higher to where the point I can lean my shoulders forward and then back down, that's one portion of it. The transition is where it gets most everybody. And when I was doing this and I was actually working on this for a bit, uh, with the rings and there's a specific way that you hold the rings in like a false grip. And then you have to trans transition from there. Um, but between the high pull-ups and then the super low dips. Okay. So super low dips and then holding that position at the very bottom and isometrically, and then grinding my way out from that dead position, uh, really helped with that, that, that transition from pull up to, uh, I dip. didn't even think about that's the origin of that that movement is from rings. Oh yeah. So that's probably the best place to practice it. I would think, I think that's the, the because that would probably be more advantageous for your, yeah, your cause wrist you can position. rotate it and, and kind of pull it in and keep your elbows in close. It's and, a so, really complex exercise in terms of, so what I mean, I, I'm like not qualified well, to answer this cause I've never given a shit to do this, but if it was a client of mine, I, what well, the first thing to do is I would look at where their failing point is. Right. Yeah. And, and then we would train and figure that out to your point where is that the getting all the way up to uh, get the bar up to their chest and then the, or is it the transition or is it the dipping out of that yeah. portion so that's what the first thing i would assess and then the leak of energy between all of that with staying super rigid with your core 
So that's why, you know, a lot of the gymnasts will do these like hollow body position. And so they feel that connectivity between their fingertips to their toes. They can keep their body stiff as a board. And so they, you get into a rocking position, like nothing, nothing breaks. Nothing has that sort of uh, uh, loose flex to it. So uh, to, to stay rigid, it keeps that nice vertical line. So when you go to transition, you're not like, swinging and, and um you know getting out of uh, uh optimal yeah. form what about bands under your feet i feel like taking the bands from the top yeah. and then assisting you that way you can do the full movement a partner and is even better but band, you know why it's tough with bands a partner would be so, better well if you have somebody this is a standing, device that like holds your waist that, that actually attaches to the rings oh. they've made which actually it gives you a little bit of that elastic okay. energy. Because I'm imagining it on my feet, and you you know what happens to your feet when you're doing a muscle up? They're all over the place. So having a band under you is going to be kind of well. Tough. That also would yeah, but that would well, you're train what he's saying though too is like keeping yourself rigid and stiff yeah. and not allowing your legs to kick all over the place. Mm -hmm. Obviously, when you're just doing your body weight, you're going to do that and cheat it up. But yeah. well, that's I think the CrossFit. I mean, that they they're all momentum based, and they'll do the swinging, kipping, and all that kind of stuff. That's a different. Uh, beast entirely than doing a strict muscle up you know what's what's hard about this uh, first off i love what you said about the dip so i at one point was trying to get to be able to do this on a straight pull-up bar which is i don't know if it's harder than rings or not um and it wasn't i didn't grind my way up i, I used momentum mm -hmm. uh, not as much as the the you know the really good crossfit uh, you know people will do but i did use some momentum but one thing that i noticed was with my pull-up because i had learned to do a pull-up to activate my back for so long. So when you're doing a pull-up to really try and hit the back, you're leading with your chest, you're squeezing your shoulders back, and you're almost leaning back. Well, this is not the position you want to be in at the top when you're trying to do a muscle-up. So I had, yes, I had yeah, to learn to how to like do this forward. like and bring my body forward type of position. That took me forever because it was such a different muscle recruitment It's pattern. pretty functional, though, if you think about it. Like if you've ever seen somebody try to get up over a fence yeah, yeah. or like, yeah, like some kind of – surface up above you um you have to learn that technique yeah. and then to lean forward on top and so i you know it, it was hard for me to kind of uh work on not pr being preferential towards just one side and then moving to the other and mm. like doing it in unison yeah so that took a while to develop but that How long was did like it take you to, to be able to do that and you did them strict i did them strict yeah it took me a, a couple months of just, just practice. practice how yeah. often so okay here's a good question then how often did you practice it and how hard did you train it in terms of intensity? Uh, didn't train it intensely, barely at all, but practice almost every day. You so know, you would just get yeah, up there, get up there and try do a it. few, see if I had it that day. If mm -hmm. not, like I get a little higher, yeah. you know, in my pull up, I'd, I'd, uh, you know, get to a position where I'm like leaning over more effectively. And then I'd get to a point where, oh, I can, I can extend from here and I just would do it. And then it's, then I got it. Yeah. The that's mo most important question. How cool did you look doing this? <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I mean, I was taking <laughs> selfies while I was up <laughs> yeah. there. It's totally just Nobody, people, people nobody even you? knew I could do nobody it. Nobody cared? Yeah. There was one that person who like, even seen me do it. And this is, this is actually when I was like, my friends were doing CrossFit and like, they're like, come on, dude, you do it with me. And so I, I just had to prove I could at least do it there mm. in that setting. And so I did it, but it was just like, that but was nobody it. Nobody cared. Then, nobody now cared. this was <laughs> during a stint where you just trained rings. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. For a while. I was really into yeah ring training for a while. Awesome. Next question is from Micah two four four eight. The recommended daily allowance for protein is about 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight per day, which is about 0.36 grams per pound of body weight for optimum health. Tell us why they are wrong. Let's fix that sentence because there's an inaccuracy there. So the RDA um, is not designed for optimal health. No, the it's RDA, like the bare minimum you need to hit. Right. The RDA is based on what will prevent uh, related diseases that are connected to a deficiency in whatever they're recommending. So the RDA for vitamin C, vitamin K, vitamin D, magnesium, zinc, protein, fat, it's all based off of a safe minimum, okay, that will prevent you from getting developing issues. It is not optimum. Okay. So think, apply this to anything in your life. What's the minimum you could work to barely pay your bills, yeah. right? Versus how much you would like to earn in order to live the life that you want. With protein, it's similar. Could you eat 0.36 grams per pound of body weight and not develop disease related to protein deficiency? Yes. Yes, you could. You'd be fine. You're probably not going to develop a deficiency, a protein deficiency if you ate that. 
would that be the optimal amount for muscle growth, fat loss, performance, recovery, recovery, uh, insulin sensitivity, longevity, uh, bone health, like everything? Else? No, it's not. It's actually way lower than what is considered that would be optimal. And 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 I'm not just speaking out of from anecdote. This is actually very well studied. No, no. Lane talks about this. And in, in fact, the the optimal or the the to get the most is is up above 1.5. And we recommend per kilo. Yeah. So I mean the the easy and and why we recommend one to one, it's just easy. It's like it falls in the middle of that, right? It's not quite the, one gram per pound. Yeah, yeah. It's just an easy, like whatever body weight you want to be, right? So that takes out the like, what if you're 40% overweight? Okay. Well, versus 10% body fat. Like, okay, whatever body weight you want to be. Hit that in grams of protein. Hit that in grams of protein. It's like that simple. And yeah. you're going to get the optimal. So here's what the. So in the and if you fall a little short of that, you're not going to die. You're not going to have major deficiencies. Yeah. That's what this, this is what comes from the RDA. You're going to be okay, mm -hmm. but you're not going to build the most amount of muscle. And that's what most most people's goal, whether it's fat loss or building muscle, want to build the most amount of muscle. Because the more muscle you have for the fat loss client, the faster metabolism is going to work, the easier it's going to be to lose fat. Let me give you an example of, of this. Uh, I just saw some data. This was communicated by Dr. Andy Galpin recently on strength training. And the question that he was asked, and he's one of the lead researchers on, on the effects of strength training on the body. Yeah. The question was, what's the minimum amount of strength training that someone can do to not lose muscle? And he wasn't talking about athletes. He wasn't talking about bodybuilders. He was talking about the average person. So the average person, every 10 years, will lose some muscle. How much can the average person do just to not lose muscle? You know what the answer was? It was something like one strength training session once every two or three weeks. That's now, is that? Wow. Yes. Now, is that optimal? No. Yeah. No, that's not no. going to get you to, that's not going to yield you all the benefits of strength training. Same is true with protein. And the, the studies on this are thorough, and right. there's a lot of them. This isn't just one study. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of studies on this. In fact, they've even controlled for calories, where they take groups of people, eat the same calories, except this group is high protein, as we're defining, and this group over here is in the, what the RDA would consider a protein. So the calories are in the same. You know what they find? The high protein group is leaner, has more muscle, has better metabolic profile. So, so this is, it's, I mean, if you eat this, you're going to be fine. But if you're listening to this podcast, you probably want to be, you want to feel your best. You want to do your best. You want to not overeat. You want to have, you know, you want to get good response for your exercise. You want to have good health, in which case it's about double uh, what they're recommending. Well, and I feel like if I was talking to one of my clients that was like, wrestling with this and, and if we weren't trying to change their body composition and we had already achieved yeah. the, the physique the health level the performance level that they want and they're just like asking me like adam do i need to keep, keep eating one gram per pound i'd be like no it's not a big deal if you go under that but we might see you might potentially see some muscle loss if you don't at least hit the bare minimums every single day which you might are if you have a hard time getting one you might notice you do that. And so if that's the case, then bump it back up. But no, it's not gonna, it's not gonna kill us. We're not gonna get a disease. You're not gonna have this massive deficiency. If you drop down to the RDA, you're just if we're trying to make changes, we're trying to make gains, we're trying to build muscle, we're trying to change your body composition. Well, by us not eating the one to one, right? One gram for every pound a, 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 a pound you weigh is just an easy way for you to stay at towards the optimal levels for building muscle or body composition. Just to give you an example, I weigh about two a little about 207, 208 pounds or so, right? According to the RDA, I would eat about 75 grams of protein a day or 70 grams of protein a day. Uh would be would put would be okay for me. If I, I'm telling everybody right now, if I eat 70 grams of protein a day, I would notice dramatic loss. In, you would lose muscle. Of muscle. You also have to keep in mind though. And my appetite would go up. You have to keep in mind too though, you've also built an abnormal amount of muscle for your body and your frame. It's so best, you're already- It's the best compliment ever. <laughs> <you're>, <laughs> it's just abnormal. Yeah. You're already, you're <laughs> already, you're already for your bone and right, right, height right. and everything right. like that, uh, carrying probably 15, 20 pounds more muscle right. than, than what was average or normal for your body. So in order to keep that, and that's a good point. This is a good, actually a good point of you using yourself as an example. The, the more muscle that you have built, I think the more, the, the more that becomes important that this number stays at an yeah, optimal range yeah, in order to keep that. Probably. Otherwise, if you drop down to RDA, someone like you, 
your body would love that you, you wouldn't get fat per se no. but you would probably start to lose muscle and then your body would start to kind of find homeostasis yeah. of oh, okay yeah. if he's only eating this much protein yeah. he trains as much this and, is kind of strength over. training plays yeah. a role hormones play a role you know stress plays a role everything plays a role um but yeah overall this is just a low recommendation if you're looking to improve next question is from honey beast what can be a daily routine for neck and back slouching oh okay you know, this is a good question. So when I was training people actively in gyms uh, a long time ago, this was a big issue. I mean, we I trained and I managed gyms here in Silicon Valley. So a good percentage of my clients worked in tech and worked at desks. So that, and that promotes that kind of posture. Mm -hmm. What's crazy is now the amount, the percentage of just everyday people I see like this and kids. Yeah. This is actually quite common in children. So the idea behind any... If you want your body to move or, or, or shape a particular way, strengthen the muscles that promote that, mm -hmm. right? So back slouching, shoulders rolling forward. Well, what muscles would I need to be strong to support the opposite of that? Rear delts, right. Yeah, rhomboids. so the mid-back muscles, right? My neck moving forward. Well, all the, the deep cervical muscles that pull my neck back and give me kind of this double chin look. So yep. you essentially strengthen what opposes this posture to prevent this posture from getting too dramatic. And that's pretty much it. That's, that's, that's my, generally true for anything. My here. favorite thing to do with my clients that had a job that required them to sit at a computer all day, which is basically working against what we're trying to do, yeah. tackle is a, is a real light band that they just kept at their desk. And they literally would just every hour stand up and do 15 to 20 band pull aparts. Yeah, and pull -aparts. I would teach them to stand up tall and straight, tuck the chin back and then do 15 yep. to 20 band pull parts, get back to work. And yep. if they just, if they train themselves- You know, I did the same thing. Yeah. yeah. They train their level with that, they get it against the wall, right? Yeah. So they can get that feedback with their head um, and then their shoulders and getting that external rotation. So yeah, between band pull parts and then also just our wall press or wall test uh, to just, you know, make opportunities for that. And you have to almost like put it as an alarm or, or something initially to, to create well, that you, habit. If you do a good job of becoming the first step to your point is to become aware of, of this. What, and what is this, this poor posture look like? That's a little more obvious to you because you're asking the question. Well, what is kind of the optimal posture look like as far as, you know, the neutral, neutral spine and your head yeah. and your, and your retract the shoulders. Are like you saying that that's why I love the wall. Once you kind of figure out what that feels like, You'll, I'll do, I do this yeah, when we're doing this. Exactly. Anywhere. Here, I'll, yeah. you know, I'll, every once in a while when the camera's not on me and they're talking, I'll be over here and I'll just kind of activate. I'll, yeah, I'll activate. My yeah. core, my core is activated right now. I, I tuck the chin. Yep. My shoulders are pulled back. I do it on planes all the time. I do it when I'm driving. Mm -hmm. Like if I catch myself doing this for a while, I'll just, and I think if you're really good about becoming aware of that posture and what it's doing, just, just doing that. Throughout the day, let's we'll comment real difference. quick on what it's doing, right? Besides the way it looks, because I'm assuming this question is being asked because the person's like, I don't like the way it looks, which, okay. But there are other downstream effects from a suboptimal, let's just loosely categorize it, suboptimal posture. Uh, you have uh, impediments in breathing. Full diaphragmatic breaths are harder to do when you're slouching and crouched forward. There's also a feedback mechanism that happens in the body where the way you feel makes you hold your body a particular way, but the way you hold your body also sends a message to your brain that says, we feel this way. So if you hold yourself in this slouched, protective position, which typically means fear, typically means depression or illness or sickness, you'll actually start to feel those ways as well because of the feedback. So the downstream effects of you know, correcting this or training this are not just you look better. You'll actually feel a lot better. You'll breathe a lot better. Um, and then I could even make the case that that could affect things like hormones and sleep and so on. So this is an important one for a lot of people. Next question is from Patrick, the hybrid. If you are regularly active, do you think sport massage is important? I mean, that's why I married one. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's why. <laughs> it's that's it, that's it man. I covered saw, that. I check saw, that yeah, box. I was like, oh my god, this is a necessity right here. Yeah, you know, you know what's funny? So, I, so I'll tell a story. I used to, so I had a wellness studio. That's for not why I married you. Time. Money, I know. I, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, real quick, gotta well, say this real yeah, quick. Yeah. She'll <laughs> think I'm yeah, serious. Yeah, so yeah, hold yeah, on a second. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of reasons. Yeah, yeah. So I used to own a wellness studio. And I, at that time, when I first started it, I was definitely the meathead trainer. So I was like, you know, I knew strength training. I knew macros. That was it. Weight loss, muscle gain. 
Uh, but I knew that there was value in other modalities. And one of the modalities that I wanted in my studio was body work or massage, right? Uh, because I saw the value that it provided other people. I had never really experienced it, wasn't a massage person, but I said, you know, people will want this. I think that people can benefit. So I had it in there. So I'm so happy I did because for 15 years, I worked side by side with people who did body work. And I saw the impact it had on movement. I saw the impact it had on uh, people's emotions, on how they felt. Like there's a lot of reasons why massage can be valuable. One of them is getting the body to move differently. So when someone's pressing on muscles or, or working on muscles, it communicates to the central nervous system and it tells the central nervous system to fire a little bit differently. Like here's a simple example. You're really tight in your neck. Somebody pushing on your trap muscle give, allows it to quote unquote release. Well, really what's happening is you're pushing on that trap muscle. The CNS at first fires a little harder, so it feels tight, but eventually the CNS gets the signal and it actually relaxes and melts and then you feel much better. There, it's much more complex than that. Uh, really good massage therapists know how to do that through the whole body to get you move a little bit differently. Com and combined with strength training, it's this amazing uh, combination. But there's another part to it, which is the human touch. I saw this firsthand. I had I had one client in particular. I saw this with other people, but this one person stands out. I had this one client, older gentleman, lived on his own, never married. You know, he was a great guy, loved him, a little awkward or whatever. Didn't have tons of close friends. And I convinced him to get massage. And the benefits he got, he got some benefit from the body work, but he got tremendous benefit from being touched because he never, he was never being touched. He was never hugging people, embracing people. Touch is extremely healing and good massage therapists know this. And I know some people are probably rolling their eyes. Uh, I'm telling you, this is, this is a big part of it. Massage therapists know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. But chemically, isn't it like, uh, I, I mean, you, what's that? So Hor powerful. Yeah. What's that uh, bonding chemical oxytocin. oxytocin that you get from that? I mean, it's just, and there's all those studies with like little babies that don't get touched, you know, and, and how they turn out. And oh it's, yeah. Oh my God. And a lot of them die of, of, um, depression and neglect. And neglect yeah. and so it's, again, it's, it's one of those things you don't really consider as much because, um, as you, as you become an adult, it's like, well, you know, you can be isolated. I'm a lone wolf or, you know, all these types of things, but really like, I mean, we, we suffer the consequences of not having human to human interactions. Yeah. And that's like definitely in our physiology. So to, to be able to have that, I, I think it's massively valuable. I, I mean, I drank the Kool-Aid over 13 years ago, so there's no doubt in my mind the power of it. And I've also, being married to Katrina, I've I've been the whole spectrum of, uh, there was a period in my life where she literally massaged me every single night. And then I- This I've was seen, the closing period. Yeah, yeah, this was, the, this was the closing period. And then I've had every yeah. level of frequency between that, right? Nothing is more than every single day. And then I've had three times a week, I've had two times a week, one time a week, and then not at all. And the difference that I feel from that is profound. I mean, when she's massaging me on a, a semi, even just a semi regular basis, two or three times a week, uh, my workouts are significantly improved. The Your pumps. Yeah, my mm -hmm. pumps, yeah. my recovery. Like, I just. It's a yeah, 90 connected. difference. So there's that category. So no doubt what it does for, for recovery and the CNS and to the points you made, made there. And then to your point about touch, 100%. Being touched by another human being like that, um, especially somebody like that's in that field normally who's about positivity and good energy. And yeah. they're, they're normally like Katrina before every client, like they do this thing where they, they clear themselves and they, they want to bring only that type of energy to the client. And so they recognize that they're, they're transferring some of that energy over to that person where they rub you. So you're getting that benefit of it. Then also what, how many times have we talked about the uh, meditation and creating space mm -hmm. like that? It forces that. Like it's an hour and a half where I'm it's silent and yep. all that's going on is music in the background and I'm completely quiet and in my head. Man, those are some of my best yeah. business thoughts and introspective thoughts. And you ever stop the massage? Hold yeah. on a second, I write yeah. this down. Oh yeah. man, <laughs> so relaxed. Yeah. Like I, you just there's so much value to it. Really, it's an, to me, it's more about expense. If you can afford. Yeah to do this, the more you do this, the more beneficial I think it is. I mean, that's how it's so the most I parasympathetic. I think like I can feel like in terms oh. of like calm because yeah, you're, 
I mean, somebody else is sort of taking care of all these things and you're just, you you know, you're just there, um, you know, in your own calm headspace. Yeah. This is, by the way, this is an ancient practice. This has been around for a long yeah. time. There's a reason why it's been around for There's a, a reason why it's lasted so long. There's a reason why machine, uh, massage or tool massage has never replaced massage therapists. Um, we store memories in our bodies, not just in our brains. Now, I, I don't necessarily mean specifically like I have a memory in my body, but I've seen this firsthand many times. And I, the first few times I saw it, I was like, what is happening? Yeah. Where somebody will get, they, they look totally fine. They're totally cool, whatever. I had this happen because I learned certain massage techniques that I would use on clients on the workout floor to help me with my workouts. So it wasn't really a massage. It was more like, how do I get this muscle out of the way? Or how do I work on this area so they can move better? And a perfectly fine person, I would press on an area, they'd get a release and they'd cry. Like an emotion would come out. Yeah. And I remember bringing this to the person that worked with me, who was an expert in this, and was like, oh yeah, this that, that happened, that's expected. If you massage people, you work on people, you expect sometimes people, anger will come out, resentment will come out, you know, sadness, whatever. So tremendously valued. Remember when valuable. we remember when we talked about uh, if we were uber rich and we just had like ridiculous things that we pay for. And I made the comment about I'd have sheet fresh sheets every yeah, single yeah, day or yeah. what that. This would be the other thing. Would I you would just have, before bed every night. I would have yeah. I would literally uh, have a live-in massage therapist that I just get me on the table right before bed. Like that would be the. You want to talk about like also like setting up your night. We would talk about like having a night routine. To actually have like a massage before you're oh, a bit. Dude. I mean, talk about Definitely. calming you and relaxing mm -hmm. you, setting you up for incredible sleep. Like, yeah, that would be a, another thing I would add to like, that's just like over the top. Awesome. Look, check this out. If you're a trainer, a coach, you work in the fitness or health industry, you need to go to mindpumptrainer.com. I am hosting a three-day training course. It's totally free for trainers and coaches, specifically on how to build your business, become more successful, and to become more effective with your clients. It's mindpumptrainer.com. You can also find all of us on social media. Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. I'm on Instagram at mindpumpdestefano. Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam. Adam.